Hi everyone, this video is part 4 of 4 of a series of tips and tricks to get quickly started with numerical scripting in Python API. In this video, I will walk through a fully scripted numerical simulation executed from Python. The simulation will sweep a waveguide's width and return the corresponding effective index value and then write the data to two files named neffective1310.mpy and waveguide with 1310.mpy. Both are in the NumPy array format for ease of use. I will then run a secondary script which handles the data analysis protocols in which the data will be plotted and organized to help identify the ideal waveguide geometry to support a single TE and TM mode. Please note we will be calling functions from scripts built in video 3 of this series. A copy of those scripts are also provided in the files in this video, specifically the lumscript function.lsf file. First, we will open the nodegui simulation.py file. The script begins by importing loom API and declaring the parameters for our simulation sweep from lines 1 to 17. The details of this process was covered in video 1 of this series, and I will skip them over here. We then proceed to line 19. It imports an LSF script file. The script file needs to be in a stream format before it can be used by Python. Thus, we use the open function to load the file, and then we use the read function to process it. Next, we can call loom API's eval function. This is called by first stating the simulation object. In this case for us, it is declared as mode 1. Within .eval, we provide the string command. In this case, the object code from line 18. Note, you can also provide numerical script commands line by line using eval if you wish. Upon execution of line 20, our setup script that draws the geometry will be performed. Next, we perform the same method for the sweep. For more details on the sweeps function, please review video 3 of this series. After evaluating the function on line 21, the function now exists within Python's scope. We can then call it through Python's format as shown on line 22. Now that the .eval has the LSF file's contents loaded, we can execute its function. At the same time, we can also write the results to a newly declared object, ineffective. The data written to ineffective is determined by the value specified in the return line within the LSF file. Line 23 is also where we provide the inputs to the calc any effective sweep width function, specifically our wavelength, the number of modes we are interested in, and the waveguide sweep ranges. Lastly, we also write the waveguide sweep values to an object. This will be used for plotting afterwards. Finally, on lines 26 and 27, we will save the simulation data to a file in NumPy format. You can also parameterize the file names as I have demonstrated, allowing the script to generate many data sets without having to edit anything except the parameter section. Here, I parameterize the file names to specify the wavelength I am simulating for. If all went correctly, upon execution, the script should be silent for the most part until completion, in which case a complete message would be displayed in the command prompt. Please note that on version 2022 R2, or v222, that even with the GUI suppressed, the eigen mode analysis window might display. For me, this did not utilize a GUI license. However, if a GUI license is checked out, even when explicitly suppressed, as shown on line 10, please open a ticket as this is likely a bug within the back end of the software. You should now notice two NumPy array files have been generated in the folder of this project ineffective 1310.mpy and waveguide with 1310.mpy. Next, we can perform some data analysis. The script is provided in the file named dataprocess.py. At the start of the script, we input the libraries necessary. NumPy will be used to load in the .mpy files, and matplotlib will be used to present the data in an organized fashion. In line 4, I parameterize a wavelength variable. This allows the script to be easily adjusted for different wavelengths, if necessary. Lines 5 to 6 then load in the any effective and waveguide with data respectively from the data files. 
Please note that you will have to specify a path if your files are stored elsewhere. If stored next to the .py script, the file name path provided should suffice. I will execute the script first so that we can visually correspond the graph to the code blocks. Lines 10 to 16 plot the data, create labels, set the view window, creates a title, and also provides some additional vertical and horizontal cutoff lines for evaluating the data. We will go into these cutoff lines shortly. It is also possible to create text boxes for visual descriptions. Line 19 to 26 demonstrates this, specifying the ideal waveguide width for our design purposes. In this example file, I have done this manually, but a protocol can be written to find and label this automatically. This label also corresponds to our vertical cutoff line, where we want to emphasize the effective index of each of the modes at that particular waveguide width. Next is a label for the horizontal cutoff line. This line corresponds to the effective index of the silicon dioxide cladding. Anything below this line would essentially be unguided as the effective index matches the cladding. Finally, lines 39 to 76 create labels for each of our four modes, TE and TM0 and TE and TM1. Upon reviewing our graph, we can now visually observe the ideal point in which the waveguide supports only a single TE and TM mode. We can also see the point in which the N effective dips below the SiO2's N effective cutoff. Using this, we can triangulate that the minimum waveguide width that supports a single mode would be around 280 nanometers. This brings us to the end of this tips and tricks video. I hope the files provided with this video act as a useful framework. As simulation and data processing is now accomplished within Python, this also opens up many options for libraries that can create sophisticated data processing scripts. Thanks for watching.